Good afternoon and welcome to season three on Chatbox with Sam. Today we have the beautiful Jennifer Berenz and this lady is an actress and producer and we have producer Mauricio Mendoza, beautiful married couple. Hello and welcome both to the Chatbox with Sam. Thank you so much, Sam. We appreciate it and it's great to finally be able to be here with you. Yeah. Both have mutual friends of um, Chutui and Oscar Torre and... Also a great power couple. Um, this is a different segment. I usually interview people individually, but today I brought this power couple on because they are the example. And to set an example in life, you have to be the example. And these two definitely are, when you listen to a little bit of their story and the background of her choice, which will be crowdfunding soon. Enjoy a little sneak peek of Her Choices, a biopic based on my life set in Miami in 1989 to 1995. I am so, so proud of this project and I'm grateful to have my husband and life partner with me making this dream of mine come true. Mission in this film for us is to inspire people to never give up. Since she was young, she glanced at the stars Hi, I'm Jennifer Behrens, and I am so excited to invite you on my journey in telling my story that's been in the making for 25 years. Yes, you heard it, 25 years. It's a story about never giving up on your dreams, about believing in yourself, knowing that you are enough and knowing through love, courage, and forgiveness, especially when tragedy hits your family, that you get to choose what your life is gonna be. Yes, yeah, so for me, but my dream is to let people know that never give up on your dreams. Keep your family close and united and remembering your determination that you have the power. Just me talking to you right now, it just reminds me like you just need to choose it, you guys. You just need to really believe in yourself and look at yourself in the mirror and go, you deserve this. Give it up for a big hand for a ladies and gentlemen. Nice job. Really nice meeting you and your family. Nice job being a person. share with the audience how you two beautiful couple met yes um well i don't know if you can see that poster back there um it's the one um, above the one that says sideways it's confessions of a gangster we um got cast opposite each other in two, 2010 in a film in mexico and um but um we've known each other since 1997 we actually met each other at an event in this opening of a club and um, we danced all night. He asked me for my number. I wrote it on the, the typical, you know, napkin and um, he never called. <laughs> <gasps> Mauricio. <laughs> flash, flash forward um, to uh, well, how many years, 13 years later, we both had been married. We both got had gotten divorced and we got Destiny just brought us back together and cast us in this movie. But the funny thing is that I didn't remember any of this. Oh. 
going. <laughs> so we met, this was 1997, Garden mm -hmm. of Eden was the opening of this club. And I remember seeing her at the bar. I'm like, oh, who is that? <laughs> My brother and I approached her and we started talking and we danced uh, through the night uh, and we exchanged. I She gave me her number. Right. We gave her a pack. And then a little pack like this. I lost, I lost, I lost <laughs> the number. And the, but I see there w there was a moment where I went to see this movie. It was six months later, and I remember this mm -hmm. uh, because I was I already met my uh, my then wife, who was now my ex wife. She was in this movie, and I remember going. That's why I remember it was six months later. Right. And I'm watching. You were married. You not were, at that no, moment. You not at that moment. Just started dating yeah. this other person. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you were going um, through a divorce. That's okay. I watched this movie and all of a sudden I see Jennifer appear in the movie. And, I'm like, and I go, oh, my God, that's the girl from the club. And I started like looking around and, look like her, and I didn't see her that night. Right. Yeah, I wasn't there. I and wasn't it there. turns out she wasn't there uh, due to her, her father was ailing. And so she was not there. But then through the years, I would see Jennifer at events and I would see her at auditions. at auditions and we got introduced to each other through other people jennifer couldn't didn't remember me she didn't remember meeting me it's like six different times through like the years nice she would nice say that's nice. funny because wasn't I, you wasn't you intolerance together um, yes yeah but we that were. was later yeah that was later. right so basically we got reconnected through confessions of a gangster i told her the story on 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 set and she couldn't she goes she yeah it was it was one of those moments where you're like you don't remember me do you we're rehearsing for <laughs> i'm like uh i met you in la when we did the table read for this <laughs> <laughs> back and so he's he gave i took me, her back to the club and she goes oh my god oh my god i remember that night yeah but turns out so the story this is what the beautiful thing about the story the reason she was dancing with me that night she was there because she had a crush on the bouncer of the club <laughs> the guy she was using to make the other dude jealous that was, I was funny the guy who was being used <laughs> well you know what i still think it's a serendipity moment and it was meant to be you know sometimes in life you meet the right person but it's the wrong time yeah we believe it yeah, right. we absolutely believe it. And then it yeah. wouldn't work out. Nope. No. And we, we both know, we you know, know, if we had met each other at that moment, it would have not worked out. Exactly. We just know it. Right. Know. Damn, that's exactly it. And you have children? Yes. We have um, Juliana. Juliana Mia, she's 11 years old. And um, I, um, well, he calls Adrian his son because he's uh, my, my son from my first marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, He's him. He is. He's, Adrian calls him his bonus dad. So it's it's a it's a really beautiful thing that we've been able to. Um, we're a blended family, which yeah, is really that's beautiful. We are, we're very we're be very blessed in that sense. You know, her absolutely uh, father um, a few months ago uh, needed help. You know, he he lost his job. It, you know, COVID and hmm. and he's living here right now with us. His his dad, right, and his. And his sister is here with us, and uh, and it's worked out beautifully. You know, we were Perfectly. able to co-parent. That's uh, beautiful. For us, you know, and uh, and it's a team effort here, and uh, we we feel very grateful for that. You know, I feel me too. Well, yeah, because when when parents don't get on with the other parent, it only hurts the child. I give you uh, a round of applause, and I'm sure God does too. Thank definitely, you, thank definitely. You. definitely, I'm mm -hmm. really grateful because I know it takes a really special soul to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. Uh, um, you know, I, I think a lot of what has helped us through, and I'm just going to sort of, because the conversation has gone this way, <laughs> is that Jennifer and I, um, through the years, have done a lot of self, uh, immersion programs, like self-development self developments with Tony Robbins and, 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 um, and, what I've learned, you know, is that hurt people hurt people and mm -hmm. learning to look at our parents who did the best they could with the tools that they had. And that right. always, me, right? Yeah. So I, 
you know, for, for me, it's, uh, and Jennifer is we, we work on always having better tools in life. And, 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 and in that means being better parents and being better human beings exactly. and mm -hmm. learning each other that we have been able to, I think, make the choices that we've made. Um, and it, to me, having our kids have the best parents or the best friends and that they can see that the parents can be friends. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's, it's just, example. it's a good example. And we've been able to do it. And, and it takes a village to raise a child. It does. And they don't come with a, with an instruction book either. <laughs> It's, um, it's all people, improv with a child, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's because, you know, first yeah. we're not taught how to be married, right? right. We, le we learn relationships from our parents or from wherever we can get them mm -hmm. from. And then we're not taught how to parent, right? Yeah. So we, we've learned our parenting skills from our parents. Right. Right. So but we, as adults, we need to learn and take these courses and that's what we recommend yeah. and you know when people ask us how do you guys do it it's not like we've done it alone no, no we've taken these courses mm -hmm. um you know life mastery with tony robbins date with destiny um the summit with um dean graciosi and just so many that they there's so many tools out there right. that you know on the on the two the the, the marriage uh, um Oh, Paul and Stacy. Paul and Stacy. You know, it's really, really important. The the relationship, um, there are the relationship warriors or something like that. Yeah. Well. Um, but there's so many tools out there right now that there really isn't an excuse to blame our parents or blame anyone for our choices, which is what our mm -hmm. my our film is about. Her choices. Yes. Right. About forgiving our parents. It's about understanding that we get to choose who we're going to be in the face of whatever we went through in our childhood. Like we're the only adults responsible for that inner child that's still in us yeah. and will always be in us. Right. So right. If we all have that wounded child in us. We as adults are the only ones responsible for that child now. So really working and being, um, and, and being intentional about that is, is, is important and that's what we're teaching our kids as well uh, and I, uh, as a man it was an eye-open experience when i realized you know again these are things that we think we know but we we know but we don't understand is that you know our bodies get older right mm -hmm. we through life get older but the kid in us and if there's unresolved stuff that with the eight-year-old kid you know that that eight-year-old kid is still in there it's just your body you know you get grayer yeah. and your body Right. But if you haven't dealt with that issue of the eight year old boy who was hurt mm -hmm. or, you know, you know, mine was eight. Yours was 16, 16. And <laughs> you figure out, oh, shit, that's you're cut up there. Yeah. Then you got to get deal. triggered when you get triggered. You got to you gotta unlock that and have a discussion with that with my eight year old guy who sometimes fights with her because I want to be heard. That <laughs> yes. Eight -year -old kid wants to be heard. Mm -hmm. When you start going to the science and the law, you it's psychology. It you go, oh my god! Mm -hmm. right? It's fascinating. It's fascinating it's to fascinating. really recognize the patterns that come up for us and the triggers that come up for us. So we've learned through all of these courses and um and all the um the coaching that we need to have empathy and listening from a place of compassion and empathy really allows us to hear each other and see each other and have that hmm. that um instant just love and, yeah. and not so confrontational not to say that we, that don't, we don't do it because yeah. we do because we're human but, yeah but the gap the gap has definitely you know when we first met say we would get into our uh, an argument it would take a good three to five days for us to resolve it, right? To close the gap. To yeah. close that gap. Now. That's a good analogy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, you know, maybe at most half a day. Yeah. Right? Perfect. Sometimes an hour. But I also. And we're like, oh my God, we're so proud of each and other. Then, what, what I love <laughs> when about. That happens, uh, what I know? love about Jen is Jen wants to close it quicker than I do, right? But then she goes, I get it. I've learned to give him his space I, I, and his time. I, you know, and then I realized, oh, shit, am I in my ego right now? So I'm at Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, men have a pride thing. Right. 
right. then, then right. I'm able to sort of like talk to myself and have that self-talk, which we're not, you know, it's something I've learned, right? Right. Okay, what's my part in this? And then I go to all the tools that we've learned. Okay, what's my part in this? Where am I? Mm -hmm. And it's not like, no, it's your fault. It's your, and then, because that's where marriages happen, where the divorces happen and people don't understand that we go to, to school to learn things, right? But we're not, we don't go to skill to learn how to have relationships. There's no cognitive classes. No, for there isn't. Us, right? So it's things that you have to learn. And yeah. we've been able to learn and will continue. To grow. As children, if anything um, happens to us that, that causes a shock syndrome in our brain or our emotions. Yeah. We hold on to that. It's like PTSD, right? It really is. Actually, they did a psychological study on people that were shocked, and then they did a memory thing afterwards. People that had a shock, even if they were pinched, they remembered their images a lot clearer when they were mm -hmm. tested later than the people that were not shocked. So if yeah. you shock a child in any emotional form or physical it does affect them and, and it stays in their memory bank a lot longer and very vividly also. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. we carry that into our adults. So you're both very, very right. Yeah, I wrestled with high anxiety, uh, which is one of the things that uh, when you're asking, what are you passionate about? And what, you know, I'm always, uh, 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 because I'm Hispanic and I'm Latino and I'm a, I'm a man, that I always want to talk about emotions and that I went through this point in my life where I had high anxiety, high, and I didn't know where it was coming from, right? Mm -hmm. I couldn't blame my parents. I'm like, what's happening here? Why am I having panic attacks? And and it wasn't until I went through this course, uh, her, her name is Lucinda Bassett, uh, that I understood, oh my God, I've been causing this yeah, be to myself. Catastrophizing. My catastrophizing, my expectations, my self-talk was horrible. Uh, what you know, my expectations of where I was in life and what I wasn't doing. I was putting all this pressure that I was causing my own anxiety. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I began to understand it, I realized I, I was able to get ahead of it, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not against or pro medication and I don't push medication, but I was on medication. Mm -hmm. Because I was on medication, I was able to get a hold of it and right. learn the skills to be able to go mm -hmm. and understand what it was that it was happening. And I share this with all men that I go, it's, it's one of my things in life. I go, I want to make sure I always talk about having people reach out for help, uh, right. talk about it. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's or ashamed of. Or ashamed of. It's being a man. Roberto Sanchez also brought up the same things with men. There should be more acceptance for men to share their feelings. There's a shame sometimes accepting that they're down or depressed or, or need medication. Cause, because, but on a scientific level, on a biology level, when you're, in, when you're depressed, your endorphins change in your brain and you do need that medication to switch them back up and to, and to help them go back into a normal balance. It's so courageous of you, Mauricio, to come on here with your wife and, and you're united, you, but you, you both are strong. You, you can't break a strong foundation. You are the roots of your family. There's this thing about this medication being uh, sold to us stigma. for, you know, there's a stigma around medication. Right. That I realized as soon as I took it, I was able to get my life back on, on track. track. Back Perfect. on track. Yeah. Well, thank you both for sharing that. So you're from Krakas, Venezuela. Yes. Would you like yes. to share your experience, what it was like growing up there? What made you make the decision to emigrate to the United States like well, I did? I, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's um, actually my parents um, brought me when I was four years old. I was born there. Uh, my grandfather on my dad's side was, the, um, was a diplomat. He was the ambassador of Venezuela all over the United States. And my, my dad um, actually went to high school in, um, in Portland, Oregon. And so I was called, my, my dad was a diplomatic brat. <laughs> so he had, you know, just a carte blanche to come in and out of the States as he, as he, as he chose. So right. he and my mom met over there and, um, 
and I was four years old, um, and they wanted a better, uh, just a better um, life for me. Um, and but my and also my brother, um, my mom was pregnant when, when we came, um, with my younger brother. So we went to this to D.C., and um, mm-hmm. that's that's really how I ended up here. I really didn't have a choice. <laughs> no, nope, you certainly didn't. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah. I'm grateful that they that they took that risk and that leap of faith to to bring us here because of now you know fast forward four years later Venezuela is a communist country and yeah. and under this dictatorship it's horrible right so so I I'm so grateful to to be here I'm fully bilingual we went to um, Miami after. Um, after my parents got divorced when I was nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and Miami is a very, you know, Oscar Torres from there. And so <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's just a very Latin American, it's the Latin American melting pot of the United States. So yeah. if you speak Spanish, you're in trouble. So <laughs> it's like um, New York, the Irish and the Italian went there for, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um, that's basically, you know, how I ended up here and. But one thing that I, I also am grateful that my parents instilled our culture and yes. our like the the Venezuelan um, music and food and just we spoke Spanish at home and yeah. my mom really never um, learned English, um, but I remember talking to her in English and she would say, "En la casa se habla español." <laughs> I don't blame her. <laughs> you got to keep your roots. You have to. Yes. And so that's another thing that I'm super grateful for because growing up in Miami, I was just talking to someone about that at mm. the festival we were in earlier, um, that keeping the, the, the language is so important. Yeah. And in Miami, you are a loud, proud, proud Latino. <laughs> <laughs> love it you know, here in the west coast it's a different experience and mm. when i moved out here 30 years ago i couldn't understand to los angeles, to los angeles. Yeah, i could right. not understand how there were latinos that did not speak spanish i'm like right. how do you not speak spanish mm. and until one actor a friend of mine said well i just got tired of being sent to detention <gasps> cool and it totally That's terrible. broke my heart. I was like, what? I never got it until that was that was shared with me. And I just, it did. It just completely no. opened up this other experience that I couldn't relate to as a Latina. No. And, uh, and it's changed a lot now, but there's a huge generation, you know, there's this gap of of Latinos that were not allowed to speak Spanish, and especially here in the West Coast. And that's just- um, It's just wrong. Know, it's wrong. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, so I'm a very loud and proud Latina. <laughs> <From Venezuela. laughs> I don't blame you. That's what I like about the film, Her Choice, that, you're, that you'll be crowdfunding. So you were both in films together. You were in The Specialist, Jennifer. You were both in Intolerance, which you produced, and Final Vow, which you both produced. And you were in Deadpool, Mauricio. And you've worked in TV, um, produced and acting, and obviously writing, because you're writing your own stuff. Would you like to share with the viewers a little bit what it's like on set, working together, working with each other, and working... um, in your own lanes um, on, on the film projects that you've both been in. It's always a lot of fun to to create together, right? Because as we were saying earlier, it's a creative baby. We're having a creative baby. And um, it takes a lot of collaboration, a lot of patience, and it's never perfect. It's always imperfectly perfect. And knowing that, that it's going to be um, about putting fires out as a producer, then the job just gets easier. And to to speak on my experience as an actress with the specialist, that was early on in my career in, in Miami. And um, it was a really pivotal moment for me as an actor because it's very connected to um, Her Choices, which is the, the film that 
we're um, producing right now and I'm directing and it's based on my life, something that happened to me when I was um, young. And, um, and it's really, really important for me to tell the story because it's part of my healing process and, and giving myself permission to shine and to be seen and to be heard. Because back then I was hiding in the shadows because of what was going on in my family. Um, life and um, so when I got this film it was really exciting because it was a huge breakthrough for me and it was a huge omen that I was meant to do this because it um, it came out in theaters on my birthday oh so that was a, a really unforgettable year for me um, and um, but what was really interesting was that I I said no to every opportunity for any interview because of what was going on in my personal life. And I look back now and I understand what I was going through, hmm. but I stunted my own um, my publicity. own career um, because of what was happening in my personal life. But, to, but now, 25 years later, I'm telling my story and I'm allowing that young girl to heal and I'm, I'm giving that young girl that permission to to shine and not feel sh shame anymore, right? Right. Um, well, yeah, because promotion is everything. And when we stunt the promotion, we stunt our, our career, especially in the film industry, it's all about promotion. The red yes. carpets, the interviews, the everything. And you were, as you said, hiding yourself. So, And at that moment in time, maybe, I don't know, maybe it wasn't your time um yeah. maybe it wouldn't have benefited you as much and now you're shining both of you together and you're both shining and you're making a difference so definitely well, i believe yeah. that i yeah. mean things happen for a reason and it's given me the um the juice the stuff to tell the my juice. story the Even, juice. you know like yeah. You see, so, <laughs> so you speak on well, your No, experience. no, what, what, you know, Tony Robbins says your mess, you know, your, your mess is your story. Your right? mess is your message. Yeah, yeah. Your, your mess is your message. And uh, mm -hmm. we use everything that we have mm -hmm. to really make a difference in people's lives. You know, right. it's a hard thing. It's a hard balance in Hollywood, right? Because yeah. Hollywood is interested not in making a difference in people's lives. <laughs> They're more interested about the green. What makes money? Right, right. Because we need that so, to live, right? <laughs> they're interested in the action, and they're interested in the things that you know that fundamentally are more marketable. So we took Jennifer's story, which is the hardest thing that we had to come to terms with is what how we can tell Jennifer's story, not losing what our message, but making it a little bit more distribution friendly right more marketable more marketable so action and just she wants the movie has become more ba inspired by true events right now it's not completely a full-on true story it is based on true stories right right and the okay. message is still we still don't lose the message it's about learning to allow yourself to be seen to be able to uh, to forgive people and, and right to have that little girl be heard right all of those mm. things are still the messages that we still are are uh, you know very passionate about right. but still make a film that that will be marketable exactly yeah and that's the lesson that it's taken us as personal as right? possible because yeah. it's a it's a story of a family a mom and a daughter and their choices right like her choices a, do a double Entendre, where it's like mom's choices and daughter's, Your daughter's choices. Yeah. So um, it's um, and how she never gave up. She right. didn't give up. Never giving up on your dreams, keeping your family together, and forgiving your parents, and understanding that they gave you the best that they could with what they, they knew, knew the and food. what, had. and um, and it's also knowing that every trauma and everything that we go through as human beings is our lesson in this lifetime mm -hmm. to overcome. And when we overcome it, then we get to share it and help others overcome their trauma and their, and their stuff. Because 
no one no one is saved every we all have our stories and they all matter right and it's our responsibility to share our stories so that we can help others right and that's why we are always we always make sure in every interview that we say we are not perfect <laughs> yeah we still have our breakdowns even though we have the skills we still have Absolutely. our breakdowns because it's a constant willingness to want to always work people right. don't understand sometimes human beings don't understand it's not their fault right that right. you know we're, we're we we are in one relationship we both have been divorced so yes. we understand what it's to be in that relationship be divorced get another relationship and also in the start start the same kind of issues start happening in the second relationship and you go hmm, this is interesting <laughs> let's pause <laughs> We're gonna run away from things and the reality is that we're never gonna run away yeah, from things maybe. because you're just taking what we call it the box of poo poo. Right? right. You try harder, I think, because you don't want it to fail. Yeah. And exactly. you just you you have to do the work and mm -hmm. everything takes work. Films take work, Every acting takes work, and you gotta, you know, to be the best actor in the world or you know a producer. A you or best producer, you have to go and learn. Learn mm -hmm. skills going to make you better at the things that you want in definitely life. follow us on um instagram um true true yen and um Mendoza Mauricio Mendoza Mauricio, official Mauricio Mendoza official true form films as well and um and then our shortcut to hollywood um and trueformfilms.com so we offer classes we offer mentorship we also offer um like right now, one of our students, um, Miguel Paredes Jr., he um, he got to direct. He wrote his short, and right now he's getting um, accepted into film festivals as well. And oh. he our our program, and you know, we just took him from concept to screen, and it's a lot, lot of fun. And from so aspiring to you know to working, to working, and that's what we do at Shortcut to Hollywood. We bring you, you know from aspiring actor, aspiring filmmaker to to working. So if people aren't in Los Angeles, like my son, I know I wanted you to, to help my son with his acting. Well, Is it beneficial have... for them to be on Zoom too? Absolutely. Absolutely. We, right, Absolutely. Now, right now we, we yeah. teach, we coach, we coach, and we do it through through Zoom only because of our schedules and we, we want to be able to always be able to be there. Mm -hmm. So we do it through Zoom wherever we are. Exactly. Um, and even if, if we're in production and we have to stop, we'll do videos for our students so they have the mm -hmm. experience of watching us on set. And yeah. so the thing that you get from us is that mm -hmm. we are doing it right. We're not You're talking, in the with us. right? You're not. This is not <laughs> academic. It's not theory. And the reason we decided to call shortcut to Hollywood, and I always answer this to different people, well, there is no shortcut, and we always say, absolutely, there is no shortcut. Mm -hmm. That's Hard why this work. is called shortcut to Hollywood. You come to our to our courses. We'll explain to you what the shortcut is, and most of it is you. It's turning the mirror onto you. What is it that you're doing? How can we better you? What is your self confidence? What's your self talk? What where are you with that? Exactly. Because that is really your intro into Hollywood. And the reason mm -hmm. that we can take all the no's mm -hmm. is because we have we keep preparing ourselves for all the rejection that you're about. To, mm. to go for an industry yeah. that is and it's continue. and there's a lot yeah. we got 30 years on yeah. you we, <laughs> that it's all about it's all about judgment it's yeah. judging it's ju it's continuously it's judging really learning not to take any of that personally right, right. and that you deserve it knowing that you're worthy knowing that it's okay to to um bet on yourself in fact mm. it's necessary for you to green right. light you got to stop waiting to be discovered. You got to discover yourself. And so knowing that, that there's no shame in that, right? Because that's been my biggest lesson in life. Learn how to shine open, open your wings and fly without feeling afraid of what people are going to say. Oh, she's a show off or this and that and the other. Oh, don't be conceited because I was taught to be humble and don't, don't be conceited and you're, you don't, you know, you don't really like need to, and it's not even about showing off. It's about being proud of yourself and sharing. And so there's, 
it, there's a, a reframe in that. Mm -hmm. And I think our generation, definitely for me, it was, it, that was so instilled in me that if I were to share something I was like seen as, or even called a show off, I, I right? Like that, I think in our generation, we got a lot of that. Mm. And so, yeah, I do. I used to get called show off at school too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so when you're sensitive, right? Like me. Me I too. Call, I used to hurt my feelings. Yeah. It hurt our feelings, right? And then it's like, oh, okay, I'm not loved. And like, I'm not, you know, so I got to play it, you know, I just got to go under the radar. And, and it's no, it's not about that. It's about really knowing that you deserve it and that as long as you're not hurting anybody, it's okay to share what you're doing and um, and feel proud about it. Feel proud of yourself. Hmm. So it, that's 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 really and that's the what message. we give. Our, that's what we um, we give our kids, right? That's nice. that's one thing that um, that I feel that helps us be the parents that we are today. We yeah. we look at at our kids and when they're having that moment of like I'm not tall enough or or this or that we're able to look at them we know we can't save them from all the judgments and all the stuff that they pick up on TikTok and Instagram right they pick it up right because mm. the external we, the, the external world exists right? right once they step out of this door there's nothing that we can control all we can control is the tools that we give them which is why we continuously work on our tools mm -hmm. because we don't want them to have they're going to suffer because this can't take that away, but at least they're not going to suffer hopefully as much as we did. Right. 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 Yeah. They're coming to a different world. Uh, both of our kids are in what mm. I went through as, and Jennifer went through, they're not going. So if people want coaching, where can they go? Is it your Instagrams and, and where is that? You've got a website, right? So they can come and if contact you. Shortcut to Hollywood dot biz shortcut to hollywood.biz and trueformfilms.com uh, so they can find us through there and also on Instagram as well if they want to and it's shortcut two with the number two we love Oscar we Audrey love Chuti yeah. Roberto they're you know they're Your the family. kind of yeah they're the kind of people that Good we people. surround that, yeah mm -hmm. they're people that we surround ourselves with because they're also doers right mm -hmm. they're just constant they're doing and creating and looking outside the box, uh, they, you know, it's just, they're very great, just yeah. awesome people. And I think you do that, you attract, uh, they say what you throw out in the universe, like a boomerang comes back. And I think when you're good, you attract good. If there's any charity that you both advocate for, can you let the viewers know and why? Let's see, well, I created a charity, um, he actually, when we first met, he he performed um, in in the charity of um, raising funds for dual edu um, dual language education. Mm -hmm. um, and dual language education. Um, I created a um, a benefit for for the school um, called Multicultural Harmony Gala Event. Um, and I really am an advocate for everyone learning a second language. And if I had it my way, every school would offer it since kindergarten, like mm. not foreign language once you get into middle school. No, mm. like literally since the minute that you get into school, you get to choose another language because I feel that being um, bilingual or multilingual, it brings us together. Together. Humanity and it's, uh, we become global citizens. Um, and I think there there would just be less separation in the world. Um, mm -hmm. we, we love to, you know, we donate to all different causes. We don't have one specific one. Right. We have, um, we have a, um, a charity that we help. It's uh, in Mexico. It's an orphanage. Oh, you just got my have, heart. Yeah, we, uh, we donate money to them. Um, and we also take um, I'll clothes, give some clothes, clothes and go play with the kids. Do Christmas and, uh, drives. Um, since COVID has been harder, mm -hmm. but it's something that we would do uh, at least twice, three times a year, that right. we would go there and travel in a bus with a bunch of other people and spend time right. with the kids. 
Um, I was introduced this through uh, another actor, fellow friend actor, uh, Nicholas Gonzalez, and I fell in love with what they were doing. Yes. Um, right. Oh. So, yeah, COVID changed a little bit of, of the game, but the last time we went there, we took our kids right. just by ourselves Did and you? Took, took Christmas gifts to, to, right. to the kids. Right. We so drove yeah, it. Yeah. There was a senior in high school, yeah. and he, um, he and, a, and a friend came, and it was a, a Christmas drive that they created from their school and so they they brought it we went we went there yeah, yeah was, and we uh, liked doing it because also taking our kids there to see that world that you know you sort of become even more grateful right uh, what you have. Mm -hmm. and uh so i we haven't been there in a while you know i know since covid and since covid we we haven't been there so mm -hmm. i take full responsibility for not <laughs> uh, because I started doing a documentary, which is one one of those projects that I that I did not complete, um, in and I didn't take it out to market because it's more of a passion thing. Um, but it's definitely something that I would love to to edit, um, get edited at some point. Is I interviewed our pedia um, our pediatrician, um, Dr. Fleiss, may he rest in peace, and he literally talked about it's scientifically proven that. Children will learn multi, um, you know, um, multi languages up until eight. There's something that happens in our brain that at eight years old it closes up. There's a, it's, it's a, mm. I can't remember exactly what it is. It was so fascinating because that is. <laughs> Hello. <our> <laughs> Here. Um, That's our son, Adrian. Hello. Mr. You can come in. It's okay. Hello, so Adrian. How are you? Is a meeting, but family affair. Uh, Hello, I bring my Sunday line interviews too sometimes. Hello, both of you. How are you? Who's this Hi. one behind? Hiding, it's Hello. Bella. Hi, Bella. How are you? How are you? My name's Sam from Chatbox with Sam. I'm interviewing your parents. <laughs> Thank you, my parents. <laughs> yes, your parents. Ooh, I like how he said that. My parents, my parents. he took he took ownership. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. As long as you don't mind him being on the camera, you don't mind, do you? I can. I won't cut you out. Are you going to be the next actor? He's a, he's our actor. one. Of, he's our pride and joy. He, uh, <laughs> he's um, um, he's been an actor since he's four four years old, also, mm -hmm. and decided that he wanted to go into engineering, mm -hmm. and he's going to Princeton and getting awesome. an mechanical engineering and uh we're very proud of him and smart smart kid yeah it, engineering is very good it's very okay. good you you always need the backup you know be an actor but be have another backup you know yeah hey, and you know Bella's, Hi, Bella. here well, we're gonna pitch we're gonna pitch Bella oh. Bella's an artist Bella's an artist <laughs> also but she comes from a family also that does has a vineyard ha, vineyard uh -huh. is called Las Perlas Tres Perlas, <laughs> and they, oh, in, yes. in Napa Valley. So for all you wine lovers out there, go check out that's, Tres Perlas. That, that's a rosé. Yes. And they have right. a web page, do they? Yes. We just gave them, maybe they'll give us some marketing money. <laughs> 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 That's twenty thousand dollars, please. <laughs> <laughs> music. How has music inspired your life? I know you both Latino. You must love dancing. It's it's another thing that connects us. Is right. Music, the, the dancing, the salsa dancing. For me, one of the things when I moved from Miami, I was very homesick for yeah. my food and for the music because the Caribbean um, flavor is not so prevalent here in California. It just isn't until you find the little pockets, right? So I found um, a place called El Floridita in Hollywood on Vine and Fountain, and that place saved my life. Like that place kept me in Cali. That place kept me in in Los Angeles <laughs> through the hard times and did, I, it didn't let me go back home to Miami. Um, every Monday night is salsa night and um, I would go and have my my lunch 
after my acting class every Monday night, um, then go back and dance because they had, and still to this day, they have live music. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing back in the day. I mean, it's still great, but never like it was in like 96, 97, 98. Right, I know. I, used to, I love the music too. Like, wow. Um, That's what we solidified our relationship. It's true. Right. True. Uh, awesome. And floating. <laughs> music is good for the soul. So, so, so how about you? So do you salsa together? Yes. Oh yeah, we yes, have. We, we uh, that's one thing that I know. Mm -hmm. One of the also many things that connects us is it's the music. Mm -hmm. We'll put a Mark Anthony and we'll start dancing. Alexa, play yeah. "Vivir la Vida" you know, by Mark Anthony. We do that and we'll just start. I do that at home, Alexa. Okay. Watch. <laughs> Watch. Watch. Ready, Ready, steady, go. Woo! Look at you two! I wish I could roll my tongue, but I can't. That's awesome! Look at you, pair! <laughs> our, our kids, kids will come on and go, really, guys? <laughs> I love it! It's definitely going to be in the sneak peek, because that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> we also, I, you know, in the morning, I wake up with my cafecito, and I put Michael Bublé. I love listening yeah. to jazz and yeah. you know yeah. Frank Sinatra. And and one thing that pumps me up is a uh, um, Pitbull. I love Pitbull and um, Dan Sacuduro, and I just get really really energized. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's you know, one of those. I don't know if you've ever heard Pitbull speak. Have you ever heard Pitbull? I mean, check him out. He's eh? from okay. Miami. He's a he guy, is. Latin guy, really. You hear him, you go, "Wow, what a smart, mm -hmm. what a smart guy!" Right. Um, well, do you have any last words for the audience? Be grateful, enjoy life, take moment to moment, live in the present. Um, we remind ourselves that every day. We wake up and do uh, our gratitude meditation together, yeah. and when we don't, we we. When we don't wake up in our, our, our gratitude meditation, we realize how our day is going to go if we don't yeah. do it. Yeah. But um, that's what I would have to say. You know, enjoy enjoy life. Yeah. Right. And for me, um, definitely everything he said and meditate, even if it's for one minute. Close your eyes and put your hands on your heart center and know that you are perfect, whole, and complete just the way you are and just the way you're not. So give yourself grace, give yourself that space to be a human being. And it doesn't matter how many times you got to start over. The thing is that you are aware of it and you give yourself the opportunity to start over. Forgive yourself for making mistakes. Forgive yourself for making mistakes and love yourself no matter what. That is my biggest message. And surround yourself with the people that remind you of that, not the ones that are pulling you down, but the people that continuously remind uh, uh, remind you of your your greatness. Your greatness. That's amazing. You two are amazing couple. You really okay. uh, you you really do set the example. Enjoy your day, day and thank you for and bon again, appetit. Thank you. Allowing us. No, th no, it's been an honor to have you on my show. This is, without you, I've got no show. So I appreciate you giving me the chance. Thank, Thank you, you, Sam. Thank, Thank you. You, you have, a, have a blessed day, both of you. Ciao. Okay.